you're in a negotiation. You follow your plan as best as you can. They've thrown questions at you that you, didn't, you did not anticipate. What are they thinking? Are you really doing a good job? Are you gonna get this deal? Or you're a manager. You have three major initiatives happening. You have teams all over the state working. What's happening? Are they following the best they can? What's the competitors thinking? What's the customer thinking? All these elements of uncertainty are what we call the fog of war. And the fog of war is a term coined by Clausewitz. Just imagine yourself on the battlefield back in the days of Napoleon, soldiers shoulder to shoulder, soldier to soldier, firing, gunfire, smoke, cannon, screams. What's happening? How strong are you? How strong is the enemy? What are they doing? This is the fog of war. And why do we have this uncertainty? Why is it? Well, using the romanticist view, Clausewitz says, look, people are not machines. They're human. They have a willpower. They have love. They have a hatred. They have rational beliefs. They have irrational beliefs. And under pressure, under certain settings, they may or may not act in a way that you want them to. And this creates uncertainty. And we call that the fog of war. Saying that, Clausewitz says that war really is a duel of moral forces, moral forces. And when I mean moral, I mean psychological. It's really a, uh, a war of mindsets. This leads to the second element which Clausewitz talks about, friction. The fog of war ensures that there is a gulf between planning and execution. You intend to do this, but when you execute it, you get this. It's not exactly what you wanted, or it could be. It could be better, it could be worse, but there's some kind of discrepancy between the plan and the actual outcome through execution. Oh, what is this? What is this force of resistance that actually denies you getting the plan, the outcomes that you actually intended to get? It's called friction. And uh, you'll notice the term friction. This comes really from the, uh, the days of the Enlightenment, a very scientific oriented view. Uh, we define friction as an accumulation of unexpected and usually undesired incidents or factors. And you have to realize uh, friction is everywhere. It really is because people, again, wars of a, a duel of moral forces, there's going to be resistance uh, to getting what exactly that you want. So there actually, believe it or not, are two forms of friction. There's internal friction and there's external friction. So here's an example that I give uh, many of my clients. Imagine you're at your office, but we have to go downtown. And I ask you, how long is it going to take to get downtown? And you say, 20 minutes. And I, say, and I say to you, are you certain of that? Well, give and take. Those give and takes, that's friction. We leave, we go downtown, and there's cops, there's roadblocks, there's uh, road construction, there's accidents, bad weather. Uh, all these are external forces. These are forces that actually uh, give resistance to you getting your final outcome. There's also internal resistance tires, gas, bad driving, all factors at which you could control that slow you down. Uh, in business, bad culture, these are all internal, for, internal resistance, bad culture, bad management, uh, misdistribution or bad distribution of resources, all factors within your control that slow you from achieving the strategy that you want. External forces could be the economy, uh, competitors, suppliers, distributors, all forces outside your control but still influence so no matter what we face friction if you like this video please hit like and share it with your friends look the more people who like edge challenges and watch it the greater the impacts to community business and leaders